Welcome to Celebrity Home Shopping. I'm your host, Samir. On today's episode, we're taking a look inside Travis Scott's new Brentwood, California home. Let's take a look inside. Here's what we love about this house. We love that the entire home is a vibe vibe. This place was meant to entertain. Since it's built into the side of a mountain inside, it's like the fanciest, most luxurious cave you've ever been to. We love this wiggly wall that you see when you walk in. It reminds me of one of those handprint metal things, which is literally what I Googled to find a picture of it to compare. We love this curved staircase. It's also super cavey. We love this Oz Trophy room. We love this triple decker fireplace. This reminds me of a sandwich and anything that reminds me of a sandwich is good in my book. This also means there will be ample heat available for all of you short and tall kings and queens out there. We love how perfect the kitchen is. There's a double island, a sauce fridge, the regular fridge and freezer match the cabinets. We love that this area is symmetrical and we love that you can have a nice view while cooking. We love what these two lights remind us of at the bar. We love the theater. We love the gym. We love that this swing will be a great place for Travis to chill with Stormy at and read a book when she comes over. We love the sauna. Since this is a new home, we like the sauna. In an older home, you've got to replace the sauna because you don't know what kind of butts have been sitting in there. We love that the main bedroom is a certified maximum chill oasis. There are so many potential zones in here to lump all day. We also love that there's air conditioning right above the bed. You want to be freezing while you sleep while tucked under a thousand blankets. We love the spa vibes of the main bathroom. We love this game room. Are you kidding us? Four giant circle mirrors? This place is heaven. Seeing all these giant circle mirrors would make me want to come here all the time. If you like the inside, the outside is even better here. We like the infinity pool. We like when pools have a place like this to be in it like a semi-beached whale. Question, if the homies were a whale, what kind of whale would we be? Give up? A lumpback whale. We love how big the deck is. It's not the size of the deck, but what you do with it that matters. Fortunately for this home, it has a really big deck. There are so many other zones back here that we love too, like this one, this one, this one. And we love the barbecue area as well. I could legit lump here all day. Here's what we hate about this house. We hate the curb appeal. There's actually no curb appeal because it's all on the side of this mountain. We hate all these grass lines. From what I can tell, that upper area is a parking lot. And if you want to go inside, you go down this ramp and park in the interior area. That parking area would actually be a great place to put a pop-up McDonald's for his next collab. We hate this giant ramp. He probably liked it because he missed all the crazy highways from Houston. Just look at this thing. What's going on? Inside, we hate this living wall. Live walls are nice ideas in theory, but how do you even maintain these things? 99% of these are probably dead within six months. And then it quickly turns from a living wall to the wall of death. We love open concept, but this place may also be a bit too open concept. The family room is here. There's this rando chair zone. That's the kitchen. That's the bar and living room. And that's the dining room. Basically, you can put anything you want in these spaces, but we need parameters or else it's chaos. It's always good to have some set of boundaries and limitations. We hate the bar. I've never said this before, but this is deranged, unhinged, and it broke my brain. And it looks like a kitten heel. We hate that there are no windows in the main bathroom. We hate the freestanding tub. And we hate that the floor looks like a brain teaser cube. You are pretty much a Neanderthal when you're naked in your bathroom, which means your brain doesn't work. Which means you are in no way, shape, or form to be doing a brain teaser. We hate all these doors in the main closet. Opening them is going to be so annoying that you'll end up just having a closed pile here. In the backyard, we hate that there's this hillside garden. Is this a farm? Does he own a farm now? This seems like a lot of work. Back to the GPS. Giant parking structure. We hate it. Here's another angle of that monstrosity. Finally, we hate that there's a room under the pool. When did we get the technology to be able to have rooms under pools? Was I sleeping that day in school? How does this work? No one knows. This home ranked four and a half out of five on the homies home ranking scale. As always, welcome to the stats after show where we take a deeper dive into the stats. Travis bought this home back in June of 2020, but it's been bubbling up on social media, so I figured we might as well review it. It started at a list price of 42 million, so I guess it could be a good deal considering it was almost 20 million less than that. One of the listings said it was a one-story house, which was funny to me. We gave it a four and a half out of five, which it was pretty perfect, but there was literally no curb appeal. And for $24 million, we need to have a curb appeal. What do you tell your friends? Like, hey, Jerry, yeah, this is my new place. I spent $24 million for it and it barely has a front door. See you all next episode. A special thank you to our Patreon producer supporters. That's patreon.com slash Samir. With your support, it helps make celebrity home shopping possible.
And an extra special thank you to our Patreon Plus producers. That's Spencer, Zachary, Melissa, CJ, Dan, Teddy, Megan, Lauren, and Emmy. Oh, hey, you're still here. Picture this. You just got home and you're driving down your parking garage driveway. When the thought of the bird streets enters your head and you think about how funny that is. And you start cracking up. You stop paying attention to the road as you go down the curve. You go down and then you hit the wall. Next thing you know, you're flying off the side of the house. The car goes and goes and then starts to tumble until you hit the ground. Three seconds later, the car has burst into flames. Two minutes later, you die. No thanks.